So we're back. Uh, uh, we want to show you some of the tools we're going to be using to take care of some of these pear or really any of the issues that you're dealing with. Um, so we're doing like woody invasive species management and woody just means trees and shrubs. Everything else, grasses, most wildflowers, things like that, you call herbaceous. And so woody uh, management is a little different um, because, well, it's tougher. You got to do a little more yes. sawing and cutting. And the root systems are a lot tougher and more developed and the plants are often so woodies don't usually die back, so you've got all that stuff to work with. You know, like a tree or a, a big shrub, you know, it's, if it's Johnson grass, which is just a, you know, sucks to deal with. Yeah. Deep root systems, but it dies back. Yes. And if you hit it early enough, you can still mow it. And keep it. Yeah. Right, right, or you can put it in that place so that it, you can spray it. Mm -hmm. With woodies, you can spray big stuff, but it's, it's much more effective if you cut it and treat the stems. Yes. With all of these, what we're going to be showing you is, is, is cutting treatments, is, is, is well cutting treatments, so we're going to be cutting and using herbicide. Yes. And lots of folks don't like to use herbicides, some folks are scared of it for good reason. I studied pesticides in grad school, mm -hmm. you know, so there's a good reason to be scared of some of it. But there's also just a lot of bad information out there. Yes. You know, but regardless whether you, if, if you are going to be using it, there's a right way to do it. That's and, the key. Yeah, yeah. If you don't use it the right way, what you're doing is you're either it's going to be unsafe for you, or um, you're you're putting uh, a, a pesticide out in the environment that did no good, right. and you may need to go and retreat it again unnecessarily. Do it right the first. Some things take multiple treatments. You can't get away from that. We're going to be showing you methods that will, for an individual plant, under most conditions, only need one treatment. Yes. So. Which is the perfect reason, I think, to do it how you're going to do it, which is cut it and then treat the stump yeah. instead of, like, if you see that honeysuckle behind us, which is going to be huge for yeah. the foliage soon, to try to spray that would be ridiculous. Like, yeah. you would use so much, it would just be ridiculous. Well, and, and you can, when you spray, you can, you can spray that effectively, but there's a bigger risk of you not being effective. Yeah. Just because you want good full coverage because these most of these herbicides that we use they're uh, designed to be taken up through the leaves including yes. the stuff we're going to yep. be using yeah and so you need good coverage you need to make sure you're treating the right time of year mm -hmm. you need to make sure the weather's right on top of that and you also don't want to expose yourself to it if you don't have to right. so the when you're dealing with woody plants cutting and treating is the safest one of the more effective ways to do it it's more labor intensive it is but it is more effective so all right yeah so here's some of the tools of the trade so for the average homeowner things that are easily available and affordable i'll say affordable relatively this axe was 15 to 20 bucks i don't even know how long i've had it i've had it long enough that i've uh uh, you know, uh, uh, shape the handle down to fit in, in a, a tool <laughs> loop, like yeah. on, on my pants, which have a hammer loop. Um, this for cutting, just another ax, this was cheap. Uh, so you use these for things like just to, you know, get stuff out of the way. There's a technique called a, a hack and screw, where you hack into the part and you just make a squirt of the herbicide into that. Well, and I think that for average homeowner is, you know, and somebody who maybe doesn't want to use a chainsaw or doesn't exactly. own a chainsaw or doesn't want to go buy a chainsaw because they're dealing with like yeah. three things or something. Yeah. That's a super easy way to deal with it. And you're dealing with sometimes situations where the you, you can kill the plant and you can leave it standing mm -hmm. to do what it's going to do. Like if it's in a you know, the backside of a field mm -hmm. on a larger property, maybe not necessarily your yard in the woods. Right. It's okay yeah. to leave dead stuff standing mm -hmm. to a point, as long as it's safe, you know, but that's cheap and easy to use. Mm -hmm. Actually, probably the most common thing that somebody's gonna have is a good pair of loppers. Mm -hmm. Not hand pruners. Hand pruners right. work for very small things like an inch or less less than an inch is better yeah and i always have a pair of hand pruners with me that there's some over there and that can go grab some from that toolbox you can treat things that are small enough to use these on these are good just to have around mm -hmm. we um, have lots of those and lots of those 
So for like a homeowner or somebody who has just a few things to do or something that you could just space out over time. Yeah. Right. Um, you can cut something two inches is pushing it with these. Yeah. Right. But um, as long as you keep them sharp, you know, that's sharp. Uh, and they're not too expensive. Even no, for not. a decent pair, they're not too yeah. expensive. These are pretty decent. I don't remember how much they yeah. were, but they were not expensive at all. Well, you they're, know, a lot of what we do, we have volunteers. Yeah. And sometimes even kids. Yeah. And the like these kind of tools are really great for kids, like if, especially like on honeysuckle and stuff like that, where you gotta kind of get you gotta even be able to get into yes. the thing to yeah. cut it down with a chainsaw. And so, you know, if you want to have all your friends over for a party oh, to help you remove your honeysuckle, <laughs> just suggestions. But you know, these are again, like you don't want everybody wielding chainsaws yeah. around but even a really good pair of these are going to cost you less than 30 bucks yeah. usually oftentimes you know less than 20 but these will make as good a cut as you need to be able to do a cut some treatment on small things mm -hmm. saws of different sorts um this is not necessarily the best saw to use on anything big it's cross cut it's meant to cut across things and if you're cutting something that's close to the ground and you're not directly behind it, it can be frustrating when you're pressing on that. But for just a couple of things, any any kind of saw like this, um, a reciprocating saw, you may know it as a sawzaw, oh, whether yeah. battery powered or that you plug in works perfectly Brian fine. Brian uses one of those battery powered. <laughs> when we were, we did one big area of pair removal mm -hmm. last winter i guess winter spring yeah right before to reforest yeah to prepare yeah. for reforest we wanted to remove all a lot of the invasive stuff and brian brought out the it was a battery powered so he would kind of work in front of um andrew had the chainsaw mm -hmm. he would sort of clear up you know branch it up yeah. repair and it was quick and quiet and yeah. easy and he would drop all these little branches and we could get them out of the way and then andrew could come in with the chainsaw which worked really nice yeah yeah the bad thing mm -hmm with that battery powered one is that battery didn't last it wasn't gonna last all day but but that's the thing that somebody's likely to have like yeah. i have multiple drills in my shop sure. in my garage at right home. all right a couple more things machetes machetes are easy to come by machetes will cut fingers off and hack in the legs this particular one's not necessarily a suggestion you get this one it's just one that i've had for years mm -hmm. when i would have to hack my way through make new trails for work when i was working down on the coast in Asian privet stands, um, but a machete for, you know, access to get some of the, when you're working with big multi-stem shrubs, sometimes you gotta cut your way into mm -hmm. the plant to be able to cut it off with the stump. Yeah. But also these work perfectly well for a hacking screw, because all you're doing yeah. is making a gash. Yep. So a couple more cutting tools. Uh, for a professional or folks who have a little bit of farm experience, uh, we have saws. The ones that you're most likely to use is something like this. This is a 50cc saw. Uh, it's a steel. There's all kinds of different ones you can use. There's absolutely nothing wrong with getting a homeowner model residential grade saw if you're just going to use it occasionally, right? Which means not not running it all day long not every day you may some of you may have some of those and have your own stories where you've had one that'll hold up to this it's just not common that's what i'm saying yeah. but this is it's a farm boss and they're for, for still they have these lines of homeowner farm and ranch professional mm -hmm. right the fact of the matter is they all handle a lot of work yeah you don't have to have a professional grade saw there's very specific things that make it a professional grade and one of those things is not necessarily that you can't that you can use it all day this saw uh the specs on this saw just the power head is a little over 12 pounds with fuel oil bar chain you're getting close to 15 pounds and if you're doing a lot of work with this it really works the shoulders and yeah like that would be way too much for me. it would so I don't even wanna, yeah and and two it's a 50 cc saw and that's good for quick easy work but it's just often not necessary mm -hmm. this saw is about 400 bucks yeah so we had an artist here. I'll send you some images. You could include them if you want. But she did all she does all her work with chainsaw. Uh huh. And she's from Germany. And amazingly, I mean, steel is a German company, but she can't get the really good steel saws in Germany, which is bizarro. But she called our steel rep 
who's based out of Ohio. But he came here and he brought her and it's smaller than the one you're about to show us, a little bit smaller, uh -huh. battery powered. And she could get into all these, yep. she could do this detail work with that saw that was just amazing. It was cool. I'll send you some images of it. So it's kind of the, I'll say Again, industry. doesn't last very long. Well, but it was cool. extra batteries, right? Extra batteries, extra but batteries. it was cool. Like it was well, that, cool. that size saw though is kind of what this is. Yes. Uh, this is an arborist saw. They call them in tree saws. Um, I have a 14 inch bar on it, but they come with 12 inch bars. Mm, yeah. Um, a little, you know, narrower, a little shorter. Um, some people call these one handed saws. That's not technically ah. accurate. Every chance you get, you want to use two hands on this when possible because you it will kick back just like anything else. Mm -hmm. will. So, but this, um, you know, without bar, without fuel, uh, things like that, it's a little over seven pounds. Yeah. But this is something that more like you use all day long. I love that. This is a model. 193T and that T stands for top <laughs> handle and you're still you can, this one is I don't know after taxes maybe 350 bucks mm -hmm. something like that they make bigger ones um, the only frustration is you can only you cut certain size material efficiently with it because sure. it's about 30 cc's mm -hmm. right but it's light and that's the point yeah so but um, this is a 193 they make a 150 and they make another one called a 201. You can also get this, this these saws rear hand. Mm. Some people are just more comfortable. Yeah. The reason, the advantage to a top handle is getting into, like you're standing in the shrubs or you're up in a tree or you're in close mm -hmm. quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and you may have to do extended, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't necessarily cut things over your head, but Sometimes you do have to extend yourself and these light things work. It's hard to do that with that saw for yeah. very long. One more cutting implement. This turned out to be a long video. Uh, it's one, be a video too. <laughs> <laughs> one more cutting implement um, that's really important that folks don't know about them is, is a brush cutter. This is a 30, around a 30, 31 cc engine. I mean, you can get these big. This one is a middle grade model. Um, it's meant to use for different, to be versatile to effectively, you know, run a string trimmer head on it or run these brush cutting blades. Um, but you can get these up into the 50 cc's. I don't know if they make them the 60s. They may, but Husky makes them that big, still makes them that big. I don't know if Echo does. This is a brush cutting uh, attachment. You see, it's, it's very much like a circular saw blade, mm -hmm. like you put on like a circular saw, a table saw or something like that. It cuts here. Mm -hmm. And you can also buy these that have maybe just um, um, three three cutters on them, tri blades. Yeah. Um, or there's another mm -hmm. one that has four. So and I can put a string trimmer attached. You can yes. do that for most of them easily. This will cut things an inch. Um, it will actually cut things two inches. I try to stay away from stuff that big, but this works the same with a lot of stuff I'm using the software. Yeah. And this is effective when you've got a lot of little things. You got a lot of short little things. It's uh, a, it's not efficient to be doing that with a chainsaw. Yeah, right. Like the honeysuckle, like a brushy honeysuckle. Yeah, honeysuckle yeah so like big shrubs, smaller, that's it's... chainsaw work. But yeah. the little ones, we have a lot of stems coming up out of the ground. Yeah. And you could hit an area, spray it, hit an area, spray it, hit yeah. an area, spray it. That's what this is good for. This one, it's steel. Uh, this is about 400 bucks. So it's running about the same price as both of my saws. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not going to use this very much, not necessarily worth it. If you got a few things, if you got a few things, just use a uh, hand saw. Yeah. If you got a bunch of stuff, property like yours. Yeah. You would like this. I, I would like this. Yes. You've done your cutting and now you need to treat. And the reason I say you need to treat, do you need to treat? It's kind of up to you and what you're doing with your Yes, place. you do. <laughs> Unless you like shrubby, woodies instead of or, or tree you or woodies. you're working on very small scales all right so how do we spray this stuff uh so the most common things that we use uh obviously are herbicides and the herbicides their job is really it's to, it's to kill plants yep so glyphosate triclopyr which may also know as like garlon or remedy or something like that glyphosate's in a lot of different products what we do is we apply those in a mixture usually with water sometimes with an oil carrier if you're going to treat differently than we're treating today we're just going to talk about water-based solutions so but the tools we apply that with that solution are things things that are very uh available to 
anybody is a two dollar spray bottle mm -hmm. now what's great about this is it's going to contain the herbicide you're using um and it's cheap and accessible mm -hmm. the bad thing about this is that you don't have a consistent action like every time right. if it sets every time you squirt it you may have to get it going mm -hmm. for example some of them are these are going to leak more mm -hmm. often than other things so but this is available just keep those things in mind your friend your friend is this right here this is a pressurizer uh, just pump it up just like something you would buy from a department uh, from like a home improvement store like mm -hmm. Lowe's or Home Depot you might buy them in one or two gallon uh, sprayers um, it works the same way you just pump it up but you, you you treat it the same way you just press that and you can adjust this to either mist or stream mm -hmm. this is probably this is 70 something ounce 52 if i fill it up it's gonna be 70 something ounce. so a half gallon container is yep. what it is and i use these because i could pump them up just occasionally keep it pumped and every time i press that it's going to do the right yeah. thing and you're not exactly mm -hmm. i know what i'm getting every time i use this yeah. your landscape dealers like our local uh lions, lions outdoor equipment mm -hmm. they keep these home depot does now this one is a commercial backpack spray you can get these you can pop pieces of junk mm -hmm. that will barely spray your driveway weeds yeah you know yeah then you could buy some pretty decent stuff that's you know uh for 80 bucks that's kind of what we do. yeah yeah and so you can buy those from the same places we just talked about yeah the brand is jack toe but lots of different brands make them still make some uh just all kinds of different brands there's brass parts um it's reliable it'll handle oil or water formulations and uh I, I know what this nozzle is going to do. Mm -hmm. I know it's reliable. I know it's not going to be leaking all over the place if I'm painting it, if I'm keeping my seals maintained and stuff like that. Parts are available. You can order it online. Um, it holds pressure well. Mm -hmm. That's not necessary for everybody. Right. right? But you're probably going to pay in the $60 to $80 range to get something decent yeah. and reliable that you're going to use. You know, even up to a three to four gallon. That's four gallons um you can buy these ranging anywhere from like one gallon up to five gallon backpack yeah. sprayers i have a three gallon that i yeah. use and you got to maintain those seals in the top yeah. i've had it leak yes you know you I've get out that. there in the spring and then you're like oh am i is it that warm out here yeah. no that's not sweat that's roundup yes yeah, so all over my back. back uh yeah so yeah, yeah stop your spraying and go yeah. take a shower <laughs> well and the great thing is you can buy you can buy maintenance kits first yeah. for these actually you can buy maintenance kits for the others too <clears throat> and just you just gotta stay on top of yeah, it yeah that's the thing clean it when you're not using it all right all right we'll stop jabbering and be a little efficient here we're gonna move down and show you guys some work now cool <clears throat>